Hello again, everybody, and welcome to week four of the high school football show here, the El Tuna Mirrors High School Football Preview Show on YouTube TV. And as if you notice to my right, your left, if you're watching from home, he has returned from assignment. He was in Saskatoon, up in one of the provinces of Canada. If you're a geography person, you can tell me which province. I don't know. He's a little further. Mike Boyan is back with us. For what? He's been, this is half of a show from the other half. Yeah. Couple that with, and he's been to two, two of our shows here. Yeah. But we're glad to have him back because he always has information. This is my third show. I only missed one show. Oh, oh that's yeah. right. Hey, he's needed. So. That's right. That's right. We forgot about that, how yeah. we tricked everybody in that week one thing. <laughs> but anyways, uh, first thing we do before we start, it's here. We know everybody's just been on pins and needles. The infinite sort of drum roll there. We got a Southern Huntington helmet. Oh. And I know some of you at home might be bothered by the way we go nuts around us, but the fact is that Southern Huntington, we don't even cover Southern Huntington. Now, we write about them when they and play our, teams during our Blitz magazine. During our Blitz magazine. But their coach took the time, uh, Aaron Batesel, yeah, took the time to get this helmet up to uh, uh, Northern Bedford, where he has ties in the community. And uh, my wife got it from Gary Black's wife, Rachel, who the chain of command went down and my wife finally showed up in our house on uh, Sunday, and I was very excited. And I, I was going to leave it on Mike's desk. It's a really and, good helmet, though, I'll say that. I, I really like it. And this actually, my yeah. sons at home thought this was a Toledo Rockets helmet. I looked, their colors like yeah. are very similar. But, yes, Coach Batesel, thank you very much. Jeff Batesel, Gary Black, uh, Rachel, my wife, who also had to carry that thing out in the park. It was the Lido Rockets helmet. It would probably scare James Frank. Oh, oh, oh. oh hey, that's man. another show. That's yeah. another show. But don't forget, good luck to the Rockets this week. They're playing at Kerwinsville. Uh, other teams are welcome to still send us helmets or T-shirts. And at this point, we'll take anything. Absolutely. Really anything. But we love hey. Mike loves helmets. I love the stuff behind us. Stuff like that. <laughs> But let's get to our top games on Friday, uh, Michael's selections. Right off the bat, uh, we would have sat there and said these two teams had these records. I don't know if we would have predicted this, but good for them. Yeah. Bellwood Anish, 3-0 and at Central, 2-1. and I'm going to throw it right at you right now. Bellwood Anish, 3-0. and I mean, Central Central beat them pretty good last year. Well, Central won by 21 last year. It was 41-20, to uh, but... Uh, Bellwood, I mean, this is just really great for them to start off 3-0. and uh, Last year, you know, they got off to a really tough start. And this year, we were like, oh, boy, they lost to McCart Zach McCartney, their freshman star from last year, their running back. Uh, I mean, Alex McCartney. And, and we were like, you know, geez, this is going to be another really long year for Bellwood. But I was worried. Coming yeah. out, winning the first three. And then with Central... We were all kind of shocked the first week when they lost to Belfont, but Belfont uh, then went on to beat Chestnut Ridge. And you're thinking, wow. And you're thinking, okay. Um, so, uh, you know, this is a good, this is an interesting matchup because Bellwood, when they're doing well, they're, want, they're wanting to run the ball and they're getting a lot of balance running this year from their backs. They're using a lot of different guys. And then Central, you know, Eli Moodler, uh, he's a great passer, uh, you know, did a great job last year, kind of working in some new weapons this year. So uh, it's kind of contrasting styles there. Uh, I mean, how much the fact is that they're coming in at 3-0 confidence because yeah. Bell was coming into this game last year. They're probably, what, 1-2 and two, or were they even 0-3 last year to start or something like that. Yeah. And I, I got to think right now, they're thinking, hey, we're 3-0. I mean, yeah, it's at Central, they're Central. Worth to read up. And I'll tell you a good reason why they should be confident. They're doing with, with a pretty pretty uh, solid offensive line from right here. Um, yeah, something struck me that Nick Lovich said after the week one win. This said, you know, they took their lumps last year, and, you know, the line said, you know, that's not going to happen anymore. So, uh, yeah, that's I think that's exactly what they want right there. They want to be doing it with a solid offensive line and, and yeah, with a, a run game, traditional build of football. And when we found out the McCartney kid, I found out in July that mm -hmm. he was – I remember coming into work and before, and I just thought, oh, my gosh, they're done. That's why I thought they're yeah. done because, I mean, he was at, what, 90% of their offense last year, and he still, everybody knew he was the guy to stop, and he still got that yardage. And now, oh, he don't have it. Nick, kudos to that coaching staff yeah. down there. Our next game, this is a really good, I'm curious, do we know who's covering this game? Because this is a really nice game. Penn Cambria 3-0 at Bedford 3-0. I know a lot of us know about Penn Cambria and everything. 
What is Bedford, uh, without saying, brought to the table this year that got them three and up? Well, first of all, I mean, Bedford won their first game of the year last year in overtime, and then they went into a big free fall, and it kind of, their whole season kind of fell apart at that point. For them to get off to a 3 and a start this year has been really impressive, and they're doing it, you know, um, one of their top receivers and defensive backs, A.J. Koontz, has been out. He got injured right before the season. Uh, so uh, they've been really doing well. Um, you know, one of your favorite players of all time, Mercury Slam. His little brother. His little brother has been a big part of that. Quincy. Uh, and actually, Mercury Swam was part of that win for Kent uh, over that St. Francis yeah, win. He's playing over. linebacker out there. Yeah. So, um, you know, some big some big uh, performances by Bedford so far. Now, this is a little bit more of a test, though, because Penn Cambria brings a lot. Uh, and they have huge goals this year. Um, when I talked to their kids in the preseason, they said, this was the year that they were going to win the school's first District 6 championship. That's the goal, and that's what they're trying to build toward. They already beat Richland the first week of the season. Great win there. That was an awesome And a uh, big win over Forest Hills, which is a team they could see in the playoffs uh, last week. So, you know, if Bedford's going to uh, be able to compete in this game, they're going to have to play one of their best games. So put you on, it, on the uh, spot here. Okay. Who did you pick and why did you pick it? I'll tell you who I picked. I picked Penn Cambria. So from that. everything I hear, you know, they've got the goods this year. And, you know, from what their score, the from what their final scores have been so far, you know, I, I kind of see it right there. And I don't think they're afraid to be there. They were at Phillipsburg, yeah. correct? And then Phillipsburg, Phillipsburg was in that game in the first half. Yeah, they were. And Penn Cambria, you know, they – you know, stumbled a little bit, but then the second half pulled away. pulled away. And I think winning on the road in high school, I think, is hard to do, at least in my mind. They are. Uh, our next game, uh, speaking of road teams, up two and one Butler teams coming in there. Are they Whitfield and Michael, or are they District 10? Are they in Limba? <laughs> are they that school that's like, we don't know what they change every year? Yeah, so they're uh, they're they're playing, they they will eventually have, the, have to go back to Whitfield, but they've kind of got like an extension to play. Some some outside of the I think that once it gets the playoffs, they might have to be in the Whitfield. They're they they've been back and forth between District Ten and the Whitfield. Um, their their school was located in the Whitfield, but they had had a extension to play in District Ten so that they could play. They wanted to play a little bit more competitive, and it's helped build their program back up. They've had some more success, and they've won some more games. And the plan was always to go back to the Whippeal eventually once that they build up their program. Yeah, they're two and one. They're at Hollysburg three and out. And we're going to say this right off the bat here. Hollysburg's defense has been equally as good as their offense. But when you write stories, you're going to talk about people in score. But they are just, if you listen to the radio broadcast too, they are just punishing people when they're hitting them. And, you know, they have a nice size defense line. They have a kid named Christian White that's sacking the heck out of quarterbacks. They have a kid last night. Like, that like that looks good. Yeah. They have his Banks kid, who I apologize for getting, I think it's Drew Banks, but I'm not sure it could be his little brother. He's he's hitting people. Uh, I got to think Holly's very excited. And Homer, you know yeah. Homer, because you yeah. guys both have Mo Valley where said, yeah. they are a well-coached team. Absolutely, they are. Yeah. And then, uh, you know, I Braid Merkheimer is also another yeah. one of those kids that's been really good for them defensively. And I will tell you that I watched their game. I covered their game against Alderdice, and Homer was worried about Alderdice's speed. Alderdice, we did not let Alderdice get out of the pocket or move around. They this they have tremendous team speed, both offensively and defensively as well. And against teams like that too, and you know that, it's, that you always hear on TV and radio setting the edge. Yeah, setting the edge, and those speed teams can. And from yeah. what I was told, Alderdice just took that with my yeah. son and brag is. As a ninth grade coach of the team, and he's on the side of Friday night. He sat there and said they could not get, you were there, they could not get, and everything was funneled inside. But uh, yeah, that's at home, Hollidaysburg, and then they'll be on the road next couple of weeks. Another good game here, and I'm going to ask Mike this question right? Everett 2 and 1 at Northern Bedford 2 1. I bet you a lot of people didn't think Everett might be 2 and 1, but kudos to Coach Brian Coons yeah, and I, everything for them being 2 and 1 right now. I will tell you one guy who thought that they'd be at least two and one was Brian Kent. When, when, when I talked to him before the season, he was very, you know, upbeat and he was 
looking forward to the year, which is, you know, in contrast to the past couple of years where, you know, he wasn't quite sure, wasn't quite sure about the direction of the program and everything. But he's been back there a couple of years now. And last year, they were so close in a lot of games. Their record wasn't good at the end of the year, but they had a lot of close losses. And this year, to start off 2-1, and one, they only lost to Berlin Brothers Valley last week, 21-7. So they were in that game, too. Berlin's, oh, as we know, got a good program. Um, you know, Northern Bedford, uh, they gave Wilmington everything they could handle last week, and everything, but they did lose that game. So... Uh, you know, Northern Bedford had uh, had their long regular season winning streak snapped here. They're maybe a little bit vulnerable right now. And this is a rivalry game. I mean, Everett and Northern Bedford have played each other in a lot of sports for a long time. So uh, if Everett could go in and get this win, that would mean a lot to that program. Is Everett's coaching the coaches the hardest job for them is to, be, to, to not be intimidated by Northern Bedford? Would you agree with that? I would say so, yeah. I mean, I think... As I think you have to be mindful of the fact that this is a whole different year. It's a whole different team from Northern Bedford. It doesn't necessarily mean uh, that they're going to be, you know, the same Northern Bedford team as well. They're still pretty good. good. <laughs> they're, they're still very good. And on the other hand, I'm sure Northern Bedford's glad to be at home after that trip to Wilmington. About as far that's, away. That had to be like a three-hour trip at least. Yeah. That's that's out there. Uh, and our uh, last game here, the top games, uh, and this will be his alma mater here. Big matchup here. Yeah. The Hallam, right. His dad's a Glendale grad, and Andy's a Mo Valley. But it's Mo Valley 1 and 2, got their first win last week at Glendale who has become the Friday Night Newsroom's favorite team now, <laughs> the Vikings and Coach uh, Trexler. 3-0, and Mo Valley. I could have think Trexler just has to make sure that they don't take Mo Valley lately. Well, and that's a different position for Glendale to be in. Um, you know, and that changes your coaching philosophy because you spend so many times saying, hey, we're the underdog, no one believes in us, and you can go out there and shock the world and win these games. Now you're the team that they expect to win this game, especially this one. You know, uh, Glendale was, prob- was certainly not favored to beat Winber, was probably not favored to beat Junior Valley, and the Myersdale game was kind of a toss-up. But this game is a game that a lot of people have earmarked now as a win for Glendale. How do they handle that? I did. I did. <laughs> that, that's sorry. Be, sorry. Yeah, that's that's, 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 right. that's, that's got to be a different aspect, right, Andy? I mean, like, well, when, when you go into a game yeah. and you're expected to win, there's a different kind of pressure. Yeah, sure. And, you know, this used to be one of my favorite weeks of the year. Um, back when I was, it still kind of is, since I still cover these guys in a way. But, uh, you know, I, th- I think with a rivalry game like this, no matter what, you can throw records out. I mean, you know, Glendale is obviously a very talented team this year, and, Hey, I'm happy for those guys. Those guys deserve to be three and zero. But uh, you know, in a, in a rivalry game like this, I think you know if Bo Valley is as fired up as as I always was to play Glendo, is it's such a special week. You know, I think you can toss out the record in that game from Bo Valley. And, you know, it's still it's still zero zero at that cost. In your four years, were in records wise, were you ever the underdog, or were you guys always a favorite? My senior year, we uh, yeah, we lost to Glendale for the first time in, I don't know how long it was, 20 years. It was like not long after my dad graduated. Did your dad get on you that whole weekend? That... Uh, he was uh, he was good about it. He he knew I was upset about it, but... Uh, His dad will constantly remind him, though, every, oh, every it, Friday night. Hey, every, every Saturday or Sunday, whenever I see him, he's like, how about that Glendale school? What a, what a fun day. Which I, I'm, at, I'm happy to see Glendale doing well, too, because... I, I know when I was in high school, I, I enjoyed uh, the Big Window guys. We were all friends for the most part, but this week I didn't really like them. So to be like, I, 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 I bet still kind of like that. Okay, our quick hit session here uh, that Mike's picked out for us. El Tuna, 0-3 at Central Dolphin, 1-2. and But El Tuna did play better last week. They just couldn't score. They had a new quarterback. Uh, what do you know about Central Dolphin in this one? Well, Central Dolphin, they, they had some really – different scores they've lost a game i i think 47 to nothing and then they won a game against carlisle 48 nothing so uh it's hard to say you know based off of the competition they've played uh, i don't know quite uh, carlisle's usually picked to be at the bottom of the mid pen conference uh eastern new york i think was the team that they beat uh or the team that beat them 47 nothing so uh, you know it's it's hard to tell what Altoona's getting into with this matchup, but um, neither team throws the ball very much. Uh, 
The Altoona, I believe, has 10 completions so far this season. The Central Dolphin only has 13 completions. So this game, uh, I think Jared Brugar's covering it for us. He may be out of there in two hours. Yeah, and also, Altoona is just they going to get that same defensive effort again. Yeah. Cheap, but they got to find a way to get into the end zone. Yeah, exactly. And it, it was hard last week for Altoona and uh yeah, good to see their defense uh, getting off their right foot there last week and getting getting on the same page. Uh, you know, just got to get the offense on that same page as well. The other quick hit, which again, if you just look on paper, this is like the equivalent of the Patriots playing the Bengals in the first week of the NFL <laughs> when everybody in the Survivor poll took the Bengals and lost because the Patriots upset them. BG three and zero at Huntington 0 three. Right? Let's get. There's no way. BG could lose this game because on paper, the, what they've done, now it's on the road, and we all know who we picked here, but uh, BG, I get, what's uh, Coach Wheeler's hardest task this week? Oh, good. The hardest task is probably getting distracted driving to Huntington and stopping at Paisano's and missing <laughs> the game. No, I'm just kidding. Um, the, uh, game is, uh, you, the game is tough, though, because you have to get up for these games, and you see an 0-3 team, it's a decent long drive down to Huntington, and it's a team that is easy to look past, and there are teams, Huntington is has talented players. Eric Mike, it's been there for several years, done some really nice things. They have, you know, put up some points this year. They, they, their defense has really struggled. They've given up 100 points in three games, Huntington. Uh, you know, so... It, the thing is, is if, if if Huntington can score, maybe they can hang around. They're going to have to probably win a shootout against BG, and that's going to be really tough because BG's defense has been really good this year. Yeah, I got to get the – will Wheeler keep them from reading the paper or watching TV or listening to the uh, I would th- I would hope he's doing that. But in, to your question earlier about 100% no chance, I will never say that because Northern Illinois just did beat no, no Notre Dame this weekend. So. That's right. So you have your – Protestant, I mean, Huntington School. So I'll never say 100% not a chance, but hey, we're pretty close to that. To that. Hey. Yeah. And now we're going to go right into our fun portion of the show here, Andy's line of the week, which could take forever because you got to do two lines yeah. in one night. It's a hat! Short steps. Short steps are better than long steps. Uh, hey. I made the mistake last week. I forgot to, do, I forgot to get a hold of uh, Smack Trexler for uh, Glendale's line of the week. Uh, it was defensive line last week. I did go over their stats, but uh, their their defensive line, their guys are Landon McGarvey, Danny Williams, Brady Venslowski, Malachi Richards, and Mason Brink. Uh, good job to those guys. I won't have any comment on this week's game, though. Uh, <laughs> as for, uh, as for uh, last week's line of the week, I'm going to give it to Claysburg. Uh, you know, awesome job to see those guys see uh, uh, finally get in the win column. 49-12 uh, to 12 win over West Branch. One of the things I like, 359 rushing yards. That's that's uh, outstanding. From left to right, they don't really use a tight end, so just the five linemen. From left to right, Colton Replogle, Trevor Ritchie, Landon Nisley, Deacon Brown. I hope I'm saying that right. D-E-K-E-N. I hope it's Deacon Brown. And Dustin Slowick. So uh, good luck the rest of the way to those guys as well. Okay, and then now we have uh, Mike's stat of the week. It has nothing to do with how many cruises he's been on. Since 2021, so that's how we wouldn't have to know. We'd have to sit there and get a calculator out for that. Go ahead, Michael, with your stat of the week. Well, the stat of the week this week actually has something to do you alluded to earlier, and I was I didn't, I didn't correct you because I had to get to it later. Um, Bellwood did not start off one two last year. They started off zero and three, as did Glendale, and both teams are now three and zero. So, congrats to those two teams yes. for turning it around from zero and three starts last year to three and zero this year. Also, because I root for good guys, and those coaches are good guys. I, so. Yeah, I, I like a lot of people at both schools. So, and now the fun portion, the stuff that Mike's when he was on his cruise, he kept looking on social media to see if he could find out who. Our uh, week two. Actually, he was uh, interested. I, was he? I purposely didn't get the Wi Fi back. It's just so I didn't have See, to. I, I was disappointed with that. I was going to put it up on Facebook because I know Mike and I uh, talked to each other on Facebook. 
Week three, Central Lime and, and, and Dan Eisenberg, our producer, will have it at Truett Barnes. I just like, that's the name of the guy that you would find out in a Batman movie. Truett Barnes at night becomes like the Joker or the Riddler or something like that. His name's Truett Barnes. He went to law school or something. I think. But here's the, the coolest thing. He was one of the players of the week for Central. He's a freshman. And I told Andy this before. That this kid is listed in our, our magazine. Six foot six, two hundred and seventy five pounds. And all this is it oh, true gosh. or false? Oh no, that's bad. That's a bad. Sorry, I'm so sorry, everybody. Yeah, check that out. That that's was a terrible. bad pun. That's a bad pun. There you go. That's enough to make me like clean awesome. and everything. And then here we go. Our other uh, cool name from Claysburg Kimmel, which is what we're talking about. He's a kicker. He's a senior. His name is Bronson Buchanan. Bronson. Now, for the old people out there watching, and my coworkers here are young. There used to be an actor named Charles Bronson. He was kind of like Steven Seagal and Chuck Norris and all those guys like that before they became action heroes. Yeah. And, you know, you and Sylvester Stallone, but Charles Bronson. And Charles Bronson is a Forest Hills graduate. I bet you didn't know that. I did not know Charles that, no. Bronson, his name was Charles Bukowski. I'm still devastated I'm, about the bad pun. I'm man. a big I'm Charles Bronson fan. But anyway, maybe this kid's family is. He's a kicker. Bronson Buchanan. But the, and I didn't get that because he's a kicker, so I figured there's no way he's as big as Truett Bar and sort of central. It's a horrible fun. But that's going to be our look. Mike still hasn't come back. I, I, well, he's disappointed. I don't think he went out. He's gargling right now because it left a bad taste <laughs> in his mouth. But uh, that's going to do it for week four. Uh, don't forget to because I always forget to do this for Dan. Don't forget to like. What are, what are those words, Dan? Like, like share. share. Like, share, and subscribe. Like, yeah, share, yeah. and subscribe. Yeah. I would say comment. We talk comments. But anyway, it's for we Mike love Boydham. comments. For the Invisible Man, Mike Boydham, Andy Stein, Dan Eisberg, I'm Scott Frank, and we'll see you next time. No bad puns next time.